Now let's look at the defense secretary. Defense secretary is, I, I'm sure you all know this guy, uh, but, but uh, this guy is, is uh, uh, Pete Heg, Heg, Hegseth. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hegseth, something like that, Hegseth. Whose qualifications for being secretary of defense, defense secretary, I, I just want to put it in perspective, defense secretary. The defense department is the largest employer in the world, in the United States, maybe in the world. It employs close to 3 million people active service personnel, and civilians. It is responsible for the defense of the United States, responsible for one of the most, uh, you know, complex, uh, you know, strategies, when there is a strategy, uh, incredible uh, influence on the direction of technology into the future. I'm, I'm reading a really, really good book right now called Unit X. I'll, I'll do a review of it in a future show, highly recommend it, give you a sense of the Defense Department. Um, this is a, you know, th this is bigger than running any large corporation in terms of the scope, the scale, the number of troops, the number of moving parts. Uh, it, it affects both foreign policy, but it also affects just how the department is run and, and how our military is run, what equipment it buys, um, who the generals are, and, and kind of how it positions itself, how the United States positions itself strategically in the world. There was probably no more important a, a, a position within, you know, within the cabinet than the Fed Secretary. It's also one of the few legitimate, actual legitimate, you know, uh, 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 departments within the government. The government, one of the legitimate roles of government is defense. I can't even start to give you a sense of how complex the Defense Department is and, and the kind of decisions that it makes and the long-term nature of them. And, and what, a, what are Hegseth's qualifications? He was a soldier. He, he, he has fought. He was in Afghanistan. He was in Guantanamo Bay. He's been to Iraq uh, as a National Guard. National Guardsman, he, he, he's a very brave soldier. He's got, he's got some, uh, uh, you know, uh, I forget the, uh, you know, not a purple heart, but he, he got, he's got medals, so he's done well. Um, and he is a, um, other than that, so he's been a soldier. I've been a soldier. He's been a soldier, maybe longer than me. He got, I think he got two bronze medals. Yeah, I think he got two bronze medals. Um, he is um, never really been in the Pentagon, never really served in the Defense Department, never really led a significant number of troops. Um, and of course, since 2014, and this is most important qualification for the job, he has been the co-host of Fox and Friends. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Basically, this guy's career path was some military service. He ran some uh, Veterans Affairs nonprofit and a co host of Fox and Friends. Huge supporter on Fox and Friends of Donald Trump's um, agenda in his first term. Huge supporter of Donald Trump's pathetic, mindless, ignorant, courting of North Korea's brutal dictator. And those are his qualifications. He's a Trump accolade. He's kissed the ring and bent the knee. He is, has no qualification for the defense department. The most important department in our, in our government right now. Particularly Bob says Trump is our savior. That's exactly the religious mentality people have. He's our savior. This is the cult. This is the cult. Mindless Trump syndrome. MTS. MTS. These people have MTS. Remember MTS? I'm coining it. I coined it, uh, what, six years ago? We're going we're gonna to make 
much use of it, much use of it, MTS, mindless Trump syndrome, uh, that the cult members and the tribalists embrace. Um, how do you defend this guy? No qualifications. It hasn't been a general. Okay, you know, generals. He, he hasn't been, uh, you know, somebody who's really a deep thinker in terms of military strategy or defense strategy or geopolitical strategy. He, he literally has, has never really written anything, done anything other than to mow the Trump stuff. Repeats and support Trump stuff. But beyond that, he, he has no qualifications. This, of all of them, now, you know, granted, uh, Trump has made some outrageous nominations and in many respects, worse nominations, people less qualified than this guy. But this is the most significant one because it has the most impact. And he has a huge amount of power. I, I want to emphasize, huge amount of power. A lot of what he will decide has nothing to do with, um, you know, Congress will not be in a position to override. Senate will not be in a position to, 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 to straighten him out. He can make decisions that are significant. Now, you know, so it's, it really is scary. Now, the one, I, I should say this. I mean, he does have one qualification. One thing that really, I think, particularly appealed to Trump about this guy, and, and on this he's right, but, but it's kind of, this is the only thing of, of worth. That is, he is a huge advocate of getting rid of woke in the military. He's also against women in combat. I'm not particularly fond of women in combat, but I think it's a, it's a done deal. They're already there. Nobody's going to kick them out. But... He is really strong on getting rid of people of, of woke in, in the military. Good for him. That should not be that hard for a secretary of defense. But is that the number one priority? I mean, right now, China is investing in hypersonic missiles to, you know, to, to destroy our uh, aircraft carriers. Uh, they're investing heavily in AI, in drone swarms, drone swarms. To, to overwhelm air defense systems in Taiwan. China's invested heavily in AI and, and robotics. And I mean, they dominate drones, right? Nobody produces drones as much as, as China. They, 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 are, they know what they're doing. I mean, within the scale of what China is, could do. The United States, in some regards, is ahead, in some regards, is behind. As this administration is intent on poking China, we better have a good China strategy. And we better have a military that technologically is up to speed, that's up to the task of confronting China. We better have, when they say peace through strength, we better have strength. And strength now is not about more artillery cannons or more tanks. Strength is about technology. What you need to head the Pentagon is somebody deeply committed to strategy, deeply committed to using technology and using the private sector, the American private sector, to advance technology so that the United States can keep its edge, because that's the way we're going to keep our edge, not by relying on what's called the military-industrial complex, but by relying on Silicon Valley. And then restructuring our entire, the entire way in which we view defense in order to deal with the Chinese threat, which is completely different than the threat posed in other theaters. Anyway, it's a whole other thing. This guy has no clue. He wants to get rid of woke. Cool. I'm all for that. Beyond that, he has no clue. Now, beyond that, there are some signs that he might be quite dangerous. And again, what is happening is people are being elevated 
to positions of great power by Trump, who are committed to a national conservative, maybe even Christian conservative agenda. Uh, Pete Hegs Hegseth has famously has a tattoo on his bicep of, I can't pronounce this because it's in Latin, des volt, which is a Latin phrase, meaning God wills it. Now, God wills it just sounds, okay, so he's religious, he's a Christian, so what? They're all Christians, right? But it's more than that. This was the rallying cry for Christian crusaders in the Middle Ages, a rallying cry for Christian crusaders. Now, if you think the crusades were a good thing, oh my God, do you need to read up history? Crusades were evil propositions that engaged in mass slaughter of peoples, mainly, you know, oh, not mainly, but to a large extent, Jews on the way like in Germany and elsewhere on the way to the Holy Land. And of course, was a stupid cause for which many Christians died for nothing. So he has this logo, God wills it. And of course, a crusade is what you could argue the Christian right is calling for today. This is not about... Christianity. This is about a particular type of Christianity. Indeed, you know, he has a book, American Crusade, Our Fight to Stay Free. I'm not sure he knows what freedom actually is. I doubt that. None of these people really do. Um, he also has a big, uh, you know, you can see photos of this, a big tattoo on his chest. The tattoo on his chest is something called the Jerusalem Cross. Again, the Jerusalem cross is a rallying call. A rallying call for Christian militancy. Right? A rallying call for, again, a Christian cross. So this was a symbol of the crusade. And, um, you know, the, the Christian right, the, the Christian conservatives, the Christian nationalists are using these symbols as Christian nationalism. 